You're listening to LVB Podcast Show with your friend, advocate, and host, Alvaro. Hello and welcome to LBB Show. My name is Alvaro and I'm very happy to be with you tonight. Before I introduce our guest, I want to say thank you so much to everyone listening from the United States, from Canada, from Europe, from Latin America, from Asia, from Africa. We have listeners in Africa. Especially I want to say hi to DeLone. He's a great person and he's helping me edit this show and he's blind. How about that? And if you want to be on the show, you can email me at lowvisionbureau at gmail.com. Okay, so tonight we have Alison Hildeker. Um, you got it. We, oh, thank you. <laughs> he is from Bookshare. That is the largest online library for people with reading barriers. So, Alison, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me. I'm happy to be on this show. Well, Alison, so my first question is about what's Bookshare all about and when was created? All right, sure. So Bookshare is an online library of accessible uh, e-books for people who are have print disabilities, and print disabilities is usually blind and low vision, or learning disabilities like dyslexia, or a physical impairment that prevents you from holding a book and turning a page. So that's the folks that qualify. So again, we're an online library of ebooks that are accessible. Um, the website is bookshare.org, and we've been around since 2002, and we have now in our collection over 800,000 books. Wow. We, um, around 2007, got an award from the U.S. Department of Education that helped us grow exponentially. We were kind of a small, um, more volunteer, mostly operated uh, operation until 2007. But we've been very fortunate that we've kind of grown exponentially in the past almost 15 years. So that's where we're at. And there's different ways to read our books. As I mentioned, they're ebooks. So you can read them in either by listening to them, you can read them in text that you could enlarge, or you can read them in Braille. So that's the very short overview. Oh, that's so interesting. And so people, what they do is they go to bookshare.org? Yes, yes, that's a website. And you sign up. Um, you can either sign up for an individual account. That's likely what most listeners would be signing up for. But we also have an organizational member, sorry, organizational membership option for uh, like larger institutions like schools or universities or libraries and such can sign up um, that way if they want. But most folks um, who are probably listening would sign up for themselves for an individual account. So you sign up, um, you create an account um, where you get a username and password and then we need to provide proof of disability. There's several ways to do that. I won't go into the details of that because it kind of varies, but you can either download a form from our website or if you're a National Library Service uh, member in the U.S. or if you're a Learning Ally member, you can provide proof of disability. We can actually we can actually get your proof of disability from those organizations. There's a little form on our website to fill out for us to get those. So there's a few other ways, but that's the short version and then um, after we have your proof of disability then you sign up for a yearly subscription on the in the US and most of the world subscriptions are fifty dollars a year um, for basically unlimited book access um, uh, however in the US if you're a student and that's any kind of student whether you are uh, K-12 or college or graduate school or in an adult education program or a training center. Any kind of student is free. And there's also a few states where the talking book, like libraries for the blind, the NLS libraries, 
um, some states, those libraries pay for free subscriptions for non-students. Um, there's probably about 10 states that do that. I can't list them all here off the top of my head. Um, but certainly uh, ask your state library if they participate in the free book share access. So also internationally, um, Canada offers some free subscriptions through um, CELA. I hope I'm saying that right, CELA. Um, Center for Equitable Library Access. And I India also offers some free subscriptions. And also in a few of the uh, outside the non-U.S. countries, there's some uh, lower income discounted subscriptions. Again, I can't list every country, but if you're curious about pricing in your region, you can email membership at bookshare.org because we try to try to make it as available to as many people as we possibly can while still keeping ourselves going. Uh, Bookshare is part of a company called Benetech, which is a small Silicon Valley nonprofit. So we try to get people as much access as we possibly can. Alison, you really know about this organization, I have to say. Our <laughs> listeners are very impressed, I'm sure, with the information you are giving us. Thank so you. Now, okay, listeners, remember, membership at bookshare.org. Okay. Yes. Now, let's talk about categories, Alison. People may be asking, okay, so what kind of books can I find? Great question. So we have a lot of books. One of the things I love best about Bookshare is our wide variety, because as I mentioned, we have over 800,000 books. So the categories, you have your general categories like fiction, nonfiction, romance, uh, sci-fi and fantasy, mysteries, biographies, they've got um, textbooks, um, political science, all those different categories. You can browse them on our website if you go to the advanced search link. It lists all our categories. In addition, we put up the New York Times bestsellers every month um, in both fiction and nonfiction. So we have a lot of really current books, which I think is particularly exciting because, you know, as disabled people, we haven't historically had access to current books. Um, uh we also have um, newspapers and periodicals, at least for folks in the U.S. We have those provided through NFB Newsline. Um, we have children's books. We have teen books. We have textbooks. Um, we have books related to, like, employment and job searching. If you're trying to study up for an interview or prepare your resume, we have um, there's a browse link on our website. I really recommend that browse link. It gives a lot of suggested um, lists of books and kind of special collections, uh, which I think is nice to see what all is available because there's actually so many books that it's almost it's almost so much information that it's hard to pare down something you like to read. So it, that browse link is a good place to get an idea of uh, what's available. But that is the basic overview. If you are in school in the U.S., and you need a book for school that we don't already have, you can go to our Help Center link, and there's a link there that says Request a Book. There's a little form. Um, there's a box that you can check, or actually it's a, a button that says this book is for school. We will buy that and scan it and make it available. Now, it can take several months, so I really recommend uh, requesting a semester ahead if at all possible because it's not as quick as we'd like it to be because we get so many requests. But ultimately, if you're a U.S. student and you need a book for school, we can um, make that available, which is a pretty nice uh, feature to have, I think. So that's a broad overview of the books we have. Just about any like recreational or kind of uh, textbook type category you'd be interested in. We, we probably have books on because with so many books, we have a little of everything. I really do think so so again check those the advanced search link for a list of categories and the browse link for um the link to the new york times bestsellers as well as some suggested reading lists and special collections well that's unbelievable i mean <laughs> you, you, you almost have it all huh <laughs> we try to absolutely we really do i it's i it's, for me it's been exciting to watch bookshare grow um we started in 2002 and i joined as a member in 2003, I'm blind myself, and 
So I was, I've been reading Bookshare as a member for years and I started volunteering doing proofreading for Bookshare in 2004. And then I was hired at the end of 2007 to Ooh. do collection development. And since then I've moved to customer support, which is what I do these days. Um, and now I am a parent and I have two daughters who are both partially blind and they qualify as Bookshare members. So I have seen Bookshare grow over the years and I've also seen it from many perspectives as a member, as a volunteer, as an employee, as a parent. And it's just been a really phenomenal experience. Wow. Now, I wonder when you talk about books related to employment, where do you get those? I mean, what are the sources for you as an organization to get the books from? The answer is it depends. A lot of our books come to us directly from publishers. Uh, we have um, different partnerships with a variety of publishers. So most of the time it means we've gone out, talked to a publisher and asked them to share us, sorry, share their books with us. That's probably most of them. I couldn't name all the publishers off the top of my head because there are quite a few. The other thing is we will buy some and scan them ourselves based on Uh, member requests or student requests and others we get um, because volunteers have scanned them and shared them with us. I'd say the largest percentage come directly from publishers, but we still have, we do a lot of our own in-house production as well. And there's still a pretty small yet vibrant volunteer community that scans books for us. The original premise of Bookshare was sharing books so that Um, people who scanned a book once to make it accessible wouldn't have to, that book wouldn't have to be done again. We didn't love the idea that, you know, people were scanning the same book in different parts of the world and then, you know, basically having to duplicate effort. So we wanted to make one place where you could go to share scans. Over the years, we've shifted to getting more books from publishers, but we still like that, you know, initial volunteer spirit of being able to share books amongst ourselves. I um, I will say that our founder and our original founder and CEO, Jim Fruchterman, tells the story of how in the late 90s, he was listening to Napster, which was a music sharing service. He was listening yes. to Napster yeah, with his son, and he was excited, and they were enjoying it, listening to songs. And then he asked his, his son, you know, how does this work? And he talked about sharing and it light bulb went on for him. And he said, Oh, if we can share music like this, can we find a way to share books like this for people with print disabilities, but do it legally? <laughs> Cause Napster was, you know, <laughs> yeah, he had a little dubious uh, trouble there, but he, he wanted to make something like that, that was above board and would benefit people who are disabled and, That's where this grow, grew from, and I think that's pretty exciting. So I thought I'd share that little story because I think it's a neat one. Of course. Now, Alison, I have two questions, but they are not related. So let's go with the, <laughs> you know, one of those. And it's related precisely to sharing books. Okay, so for our listeners, let's say I become an international member and I find a book that I find so interesting to share with someone. Is it possible? And if it is possible, it has to be, I am guessing, with another Bookshare member. And how is that? So you actually don't share books with, with among members or others. Once you have a Bookshare membership, those books are only for you. Um, that's okay. not, not, not to confuse. That's a great question because I don't mean to blur the points. Once you have a bookshare membership, those books are for you. We have them digitally watermarked, um, because they're copyrighted books that we don't want shared in that way. The only Whoa. time you'd share a book is if you sign up as a volunteer and then wow. you can donate your own personal scans of books. If you have, if you've scanned a book that we don't already have on our site, you could sign up as a volunteer and upload that and oh. it'll go through a proofreading process. I understand why, why is the way it is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Copyright law. People, people are, um, you know, publishers and authors are pretty particular about that, but there's a copyright law. There's several copyright law exceptions for disabled people. And in that respect, um, you know, we, 
we find ways to make it, you know, legal and ethical. Now, Alison, there's a question that comes to mind related to scanning books as volunteers. So I am thinking, how in the world do I scan a book? I have no clue. Well, typically, unfortunately, the downside is typically we don't accept scans from outside the U.S. It has to do with U.S. copyright law. Typically, okay. we're only taking uh, volunteer scans from the U.S., which is frustrating. Um, but if you do scan a book, it's usually using optical character recognition software like OCR. And there's different programs that do that. The traditional ones were Kurzweil and Open Book, but nowadays there's a lot of OCR programs on the market, um, like Fine Reader and, and such. So I, but essentially the answer is with optical character recognition software. Do you know, Alison, how much can it cost, one of those programs? Uh, quite, it, de it, de it depends. The older ones that I mentioned, like Kurzweil, are quite expensive, but Actually, newer programs are less so. And, you know, I have to say I am not fully uh, informed on all the different OCR that's out there. I don't do that myself. I know mm. that in Office we use Fine Reader, and I don't know how much it costs us to, to get that. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. Now, Alison, I wonder if someone wants to have their books on their PC, on their Mac, on their Android device, on their tablet, on their iPhone. What are the, the ways to download these, these books? Great question. So there are a lot of ways to read our books. And I think that's really exciting because it works for a lot of different types of readers. If you're on a, a computer, one way to read, our, whether that's a PC, a Mac, or a Chromebook, one way to read our books that's really easy is we have something called Web Reader where when you're on our website and search for a book, there's a link that just says read now and you can press enter on that link and it opens the book right there in your web browser. And essentially, you know, st you're streaming the book. You're not downloading anything. You're just reading it in your browser. And oh, wow. that is kind of the easiest way to use our books, but not always the most pleasant or efficient way to do it. It depends on, you know, your preferences, but that will work on any computer. Um, typically the best browser for it though is Google Chrome, but it works on different browsers on Chrome. There's built in text to speech for audio, but if you're a screen reader or screen magnifier user, you can use any browser with web reader. It's just, if you want the text to speech that I'd recommend Chrome. So that's our one basic way. What's nice about the web reader is it's got text and audio options, both so that, You know, you could enlarge the font. You could hook up a Braille display. Um, that's so different ways to access that text that's in your browser. If you like to read offline on a computer, our files are available in Word document format. Um, when you're on our website, there's a like a file format drop like combo box where you can choose the format you want to download. Word is one of those. And that's pretty easy because then you just download it to your computer and read it like you would any Word document. You can read it with a screen reader. You can read it with a screen magnifier um, or neither if you want to. Um, you can read it with a Braille display. So that's a really nice versatile format, I think, is Word. You can also download an MP3 version of our books. Um, that is, and that, that could be downloaded and trans, uh, sorry, transferred onto any portable MP3 player. That is a Uh, electronic text-to-speech voice on an mp3 not a human narrated audiobook but in a pinch it will give you an mp3 version of a book which is nice to have we also offer <coughs> excuse me we offer a brf braille ready format that's um, formatted to work on braille displays or note takers or to be embossed we also offer an EPUB format that can be read on a Mac. If you're someone who wants to read offline on your Mac, um, iBooks, which is now called Apple Books, can open our EPUB format. Um, another thing I like about our formats, oh, Daisy, I almost forgot one of the, <laughs> one of the <laughs> most popular ones, Daisy format. If you have a Daisy reader on your computer, 
or a portable Daisy player like the Victor Reader Stream that can play our our Daisy files. You can also play if you're off of a computer, if you're on a mobile device like an iPhone. There's a couple of apps that are popular. The most popular free app right now on iPhone, iPad, iOS devices is called Dolphin Easy Reader. And it's literally dolphin like the animal, uh, easy, E-A-S-Y, reader. Uh, it's it's a free uh, basic app that you actually search, download, and read the books all in that app rather than going to our website. And that's if you're on uh, iOS. Dolphin Easy Reader is also available free on Android, which is great not only on Android phone or tablet, but also if you're on a note taker that runs Android, like a Braille Note Touch or Touch Plus or a Polar uh, Braille Sense Polaris. I know I'm throwing a lot of info at you guys here, so <laughs> I that's so. But basically, the, the gist is, if you're on iOS or Android, there's an app for that. Uh, there's a popular paid app for iOS called Voice Dream Reader, and that's like oh, it's- Dream, like dreaming at night, D R E A M Reader. Uh, people sometimes think it's stream, so I spell it. Uh, that's a app. It's about in the fifteen dollar range in the U.S. and it's got a few more features, few more voices than Easy Reader does. So, if you want a paid app, it's one that a lot of folks like, and it works well with Voiceover. So that's there's also a version of Voice Dream Reader for Android as well. So that's. Um, without going into too much more detail, our books can also be played on the. Uh, Players from the National Library Service, we have a DAISY audio format that can be played on those if that's what you prefer to listen on. And there's a few other devices as well that I didn't cover, but I, I not to go into everything here, but that's basically just giving you an idea of the wide variety of ways to read our books. And again, what I like is it works for different types of readers. If you're a listener, if you're a Braille reader, if you're someone who uses large font, We have something that's probably going to work for everybody on just about any device. So I hope that that kind of answers your question. I know that wasn't a very short answer, but I tried to be as thorough as I could in any case. And I appreciate that, and our listeners do too. And I have to say, Alison, two two little comments. One is um, I had the privilege to interview both the developer of Voice Dream Reader, uh, Winston Chen. I Mm -hmm. have done two interviews with him already Mm -hmm. and I did an interview with the people from Dolphin Computers who are the ones who develop what you were mentioning Mm -hmm. Easy Reader Yes, Easy Reader Um, and a comment about Voice Dream Reader I I like a lot the fact that you're able to have your lock screen and you're able to hear the book read to you you Mm -hmm. know um, mm-hmm. So not all applications have that ability, and that is wonderful. And yeah. Alison, my last question is: if people have any questions regarding Bookshare membership, or they are having uh, a problem finding a specific book, or they would like to become a member from within the United States, or um, outside the U.S., how can they do that? Sure. You um, can always visit our website, bookshare.org. You can uh, email support at bookshare.org or membership at bookshare.org. Honestly, either one will get to someone who can help you, but those are two addresses, support at bookshare.org or membership at bookshare.org. You can also follow us. We're on all the social medias like Facebook and, and Twitter and such. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get in touch with us. And usually if you, there's also um, a phone number, which is uh, 650-352-0198. If you want to talk to a live person and you might actually get me answering the phone if you call there, too, because that's what I do. That I answer phone calls and emails from users all day. So I'm happy to help. <laughs> Alison, your enthusiasm is wonderful and your knowledge is unbelievable. So your boss must be very happy with you and the organization very happy with yourself. That's all I can say. So it's been 
an honor to have you on because your service is super important for our community. So, Alison, again, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. You're very welcome, and thank you for having me today. I, this, I've enjoyed this very much. Me too. And for our listeners, always remember to smile. And if you want to be on the show, email me at lowvisionbureau at gmail.com. So this is Alvaro from LVV Show saying good night.